Howdy everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, as you saw by the intro, we're going to be making some interesting landing gear. Ones that you can fold and retract and extend. I know two of those were the same thing. All by the press of a button. And just so happens I have my buttons on the front just to show the demonstration. And let's do that. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure thrusters are ah, on and I have dampeners on my suit. So basically what we're going to be doing is making the landing gear able to extend how they are. You'll be able to land on them. They have mag plates so you can lock to pretty much any surface. And then I want this one. They'll be able to retract in a way that pretty much makes it seamless with the rest of the ship. Of course, the seamless part being the greebling that you do for the doors, which you can do any way that you want. Mine just happened to work best like this. And before you say anything, yes, I know the rest of the ship kind of looks ugly. It was not built for this. <laughs> it was actually built for... <coughs> Excuse me. Another series that we were doing with aerodynamics and didn't have half of the thrust that it does now. But let's go ahead and let's get into making some landing gear. All right. So you'll see here I've made a second ship, basically, with uh, somewhat of what it used to be. <laughs> I've, uh, taken the armor off the bottom to make this. Basically what we're looking for in layman's terms is a nice flat four or five blocks for this thing to sit against when it's fully retracted. And then the blocks directly next to it, I don't want full blocks or even half blocks because the pistons and stuff tend to get stuck on them. So the less touching, the less getting stuck, the better. After that, it really doesn't matter. I have blast door blocks here because if we look at the edge of them, the narrow edge, they don't go to the bounding box 100%. They actually stop right before it, which gives the door that little bit of extra room to be able to go around it basically and then for the landing gear it is just a hinge a piston another hinge and a mag plate and then the doors are just one hinge each that go basically perpendicular with the hinge in the middle now when it comes to setting all of this this top hinge I want to have the negative going towards the center of the ship. If you have all three landing gear, the rear landing gear, uh, once I can find my hinge here, is going to have the negative towards the front of the ship. This way, when you go to extend or retract the landing gear, all of the hinges are going in the same direction technically because they're all going towards negative and then when they extend they all go towards the positive it's not necessary because we are just using the reverse function of the hinges in our timer blocks but it makes doing limits and doing all the other stuff so much easier and less of a headache because then you can just copy one from the second to the third and as far as limits go, the way we find those limits is literally by just leveling out the ship. If I can see in the outside, getting somewhat close to the ground and just playing with it a little bit. So I found on mine that 50 degrees looks pretty decent. It's got that nice angle to it. It's not sticking too far out and it's not too far flat to where I have to take out 
three blocks out of the front just for its motion to work. And then for its lower limit, we want that negative 90 so it can sit flat up against the belly of the ship. And then velocity, I usually just keep it two. That way it can move nice and quick, but not too fast to where it's slamming into everything. As for the piston, its maximum distance is only going to be one instead of the full two. That way it doesn't stick out that far from the ship and it gives it just enough clearance to where it will clear the doors while not looking like the barrel of a gun sticking out the front. A lower hinge, I have its limit at negative 52 because it goes from zero down this way. And negative 52 is just where it looks the flattest. It comes pretty close to flat when touching the ground. Play with it a little bit, see what it's best for you. It might be a little different. And then its upper limit is gonna be zero because I want it to be flat with the piston as it's folded up. And then its velocity is going to be negative two. Same thing, just that way it's moving nice and quick and everything works. Now for the doors, we only have the one piston for each side, just a left and right hinge. And they are gonna be set to two meters as well. And their negative is also going to be facing the center of the ship. If we look, it is two RPM to go up. And then its lower limit is gonna be zero because I want it facing straight down. So that way when it closes, the doors are nice and flat and it's not pushing against anything. It's not trying to force its way into the other door, into the pistons, whatever it needs. And then its upper limit is just gonna be the 90 where it can fully open. And then again, we have the blast door blocks in between to kind of give it that little bit of clearance that we're looking for. But once you have that part of it done, it's time to get to the automation side. So for the automation side of stuff, we want blocks that will retract the landing gear and then retract the doors. But then we also don't want to have to press two separate buttons to do it. So we're going to use an event controller to handle that. We end up with two event controllers and four timer blocks. And I'll explain why. If we go into here, you'll see I have already named the stuff to basically mimic what they're going to be doing. We have two timer blocks for extending an end and a start. And then same thing for retracting an end and a start. And then an event controller for extension an event controller for retraction. So since we already have our landing gear extended, let's go ahead and do the retract. So if we do retract start, the delay is gonna be all the way down. The actions for it are going to be doing the top hinge for the landing gear because we want the landing gear to move first. So we want that to be in reverse, our lower hinge to reverse, and our piston to reverse. And then we also want to turn on the retract event controller. If we go to the retract event controller, we have angle changed equal to or less than negative five because the negative five is just where the landing gear is already in that retract state where it's coming up and it's already past the center point. So it'll give it enough time to get past the doors before they start closing. So if we go into there, we have the negative five, and it's watching that top hinge of the landing. Its actions 
are going to be to start the retract and timer block. Uh, start. And then in the retract end, we have the delay set to zero. Its actions are going to be to reverse the left hinge, reverse the right hinge, which these are our gear doors. And then to turn off that retract event controller. Sound good? I think so. If you set it right, we should be able to come up here and hit our retract start button and watch everything as it moves. So we have our hinge going, our pistons retracted, that is now flat. And then once it hit that five or negative five point, it starts closing that left and right hinge and everything is sitting nice and neat. Cool. And then we also want to make sure that that retract event controller got turned off. Now, this is where I know people are going to ask why not use the same timer block since we're only using the reverse function. The reason I don't use the same timer block for retract and extend is because when I have event controllers, I've noticed it more on our public server more than anywhere so it might just be due to server side lag or something like that but if i have the event controller try to turn itself off as a function it tends to not do the timer block like it just either skips that or it tries to do both functions at exactly the same time and it ends up not activating the timer so to kind of get around that, I've just made two separate timer blocks. One for retraction, one for extension. And in each one, it's turning off its uh, relative event controller. But because it's turning off its relative event controller, you can't have the same timer block for extend and retract. Hopefully that makes sense. I can try to clarify it a little better if you want. Just ask down in the comments. Um, but that's the explanation behind it. But now that we have everything tucked away nice and neat, let's go ahead and extend it back out and get it started. So we have our extend start timer block. We have the delay set to zero. It's actions are going to be the left hinge reverse and the right hinge reverse because we want these doors to open first right and then it's also going to turn on the extend event controller if we go to the extend event controller its angle changed equal to or greater than i have it 15 degrees that will give these doors enough time to get to that 15 degree mark and be out of the way of that piston and stuff. And it is just watching both of those hinges. And we want to make sure the AND gate is ticked. That way both of these doors are out of the way before it moves those pistons. So we want to make sure that in the action it is the extend end. That one. Press start. And then if we go to the extend end, I have it set up to have zero delay. The actions are going to be the same as the other piston one. Just the lower hinge reverse, piston reverse, top hinge reverse. But it is also going to turn off the extend event controller. This is why we can't have the same timer block for extend and retract. But now... If we've set everything else correctly, we should be able to hit our button, watch the doors start to open, and our landing gear come out. B E A U T F O R. 
Now, when it comes to adding more than one landing gear, the one thing I will say to watch out for is making sure all your negatives for your hinges go towards the center of the ship. What I mean by that is if you have your landing gear here, we have the negative of it, of the hinge, going towards the center. If I want to add a second or third landing gear, say two more on the back like over there, I want to make sure the negative side is facing the front. That way, how I have it here is not correct. <laughs> because what ends up happening is I have to find new limits for each of these. It's not that big of a deal, but it just makes things easier if you have the limits the same. And to make them the same, you just put these rear hinges with the negative facing the front, basically mirroring this one. That way, all you have to do is take the same limits from this hinge, put it on this hinge. They will be the same, they'll work the same, and then you can just add that top hinge two, top hinge three, into the same event controllers or timer blocks as the other ones. And if you set it up correctly, you will have something like this. We have the same six blocks, our extend, end, and start, retract, end, and start, and then our extend and retract event controllers. With the extend start, we have our left hinge, our right hinge, but we also have our left two and right two because of the two doors we made here. We're gonna have the same functions as these doors up here, except I only have the one. That way the middle of the ship can stay uh, solid stay static and not have to dig away blocks and have blast door blocks in the middle all that kind of stuff but they're still built the same so functionality and build is the same as on the front just with one door each and that gives us the four hinges instead of six that we would have otherwise but then we also have the event controller extend turned on. If we go to that extend, it is set up the same, equal to or greater than five degrees, watching that left and right hinge in the front. And the action is gonna be the same as well, where the block extend start, or extend end start is there we go to the timer block extend and its actions are going to look something like this. You have all of your lower hinges. So lower hinge one, two, and three, all of your pistons two and three, and then your top hinge one, two, and three. All of those are just going to be the reverse, but this one is going to on toolbar two, toggle off the event controller extend. If we go to retract, it is going to be set up the same as having only one landing gear, but it's going to have all the lower hinges, all the top hinges, and all the pistons reversing, as well as turning on the retract event controller. Retract event controller is going to be angle changed equal to or less than that negative 20 that we did for that top hinge. I think I actually did like negative 5 on that one, but this one I have negative 20. Um, this is really just a preference of where you want it, how seamless you want it to look when it's retracted. Its actions is going to be to activate that timer block retract end and if we go to that one 
its delay is zero still, its actions are just going to be our left and right hinges for the doors. For reverse. And then to turn off that retract event controller. So that way, we can go in our ship. And we can put those start timer blocks on our hotbar. And if we hit the retract start, there it is. We can watch it fold. Say goodbye to the crew chief. Get our flight clearance. And we can head on out. And then same thing when we're coming into land. Because you know, we gotta we gotta come pick up the family every now and then, right? Hopefully. I mean that's the idea anyway. Come in, we get our ground clearance. We get which bay we're gonna be landing at. Told the dock at landing bay two. I only have one, so that's the one I'm going for. Cause I'm a rebel. No. And then we can hit our extension timer block. Look like a badass when we come in with our folding landing gear. Get lined up. And by the time we're lined up, our landing gear is out. Come in. Turn off the thrusters and be solid on the ground. I think it looks pretty cool. The ship Griebling needs some help. Um, I don't make things look pretty. Fair warning. So, don't expect that. <laughs> but, I think this is a pretty cool way of having retractable landing gear. Hopefully you guys do too. And hopefully I've explained it to the point where it's easy to at least mimic um, and be able to build on your own ship. You don't have to copy the exact design of the doors or anything like that. It's just mainly the functional parts like the hinges and pistons is where it kind of gets confusing, I know. Um, but hopefully I've made it easy enough for you and you're able to actually get it going. But with that, I'm going to say goodbye to you all. Join the Discord down below if you want to join the public server that we have. It is a great fun time. Lots of people joining every day. And some great builds going on in there. And other socials down below. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And we'll catch you in the next video. Have a good day, everybody.